I hope everyone's having a, a good day. Um, I uh, wanted to kind of start kicking off this meeting. Uh, we're we're going to be talking about uh, OpenStack Asuri, the new release of OpenStack. Um, we're going to be covering a little bit about the uh, what happened over the current release, as well as we have a few community members that came in to talk about um, the work that they did inside their own projects. A um, few housekeeping things. Uh, we are recording this uh, so that we can share this uh, with the community for those people that can attend. So I ask if everybody can make sure to keep their uh, microphones muted um, so <clears throat> we have good audio. Um, so just a brief introduction. Uh, my name is Mohammed. Um, I'm the current uh, chair of the technical committee. I'm also a board member of the uh, OpenStack Foundation um, as an individual member. Um, and I'm really, really excited to talk about the new Asura release and, and uh, have our community members share what they what they worked on uh, on this cycle. So uh, first of all, uh, I think this is like an amazing number that we always kind of look at, which is just how many code changes that we get accepted um, in a single release. Um, it, it's an amazing effort uh, from our community to still be able to drive so much change uh, throughout the project. But I think what's what's more amazing and what's more interesting is um, they're kind of more than a number. Uh, there's a lot of bug fixes and improvements and features that uh, make part of all of these uh, code changes that were accepted. Um, and we'll learn more about a few projects that are going to be sharing their uh, stories today. Uh, but first of all, I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, community goals. So OpenStack um, has this idea of community goals where uh, we pick a, something that we feel like will drive the community and all the projects uh, together to improve. Um, and then we usually have champions that try and drive that work across all of these projects. So the two community goals for the Usuri uh, project, which was creating project specific uh, contributor and PTL documentation, which pretty much um, creates a set of contributor documentation so that any new contributor that's trying to onboard a project has all that information available um, in an easy uh, space. And um, Kendall Nelson uh, from the OpenStack Foundation did uh, an amazing job in helping drive that uh, forward. Um, our second community goal, which is probably something that, you know, is, is long overdue, is dropping uh, the Python 2.7 support. So, um, as you know, OpenStack has gone full Python 3 uh, with Python 2 uh, going out of life. Um, and one of the things that we wanted to do is we had a lot of kind of compatibility layer to make sure that we support both Python 2 and Python 3. Um, and with this, uh, with this uh, goal that was driven by uh, Gunshamp, we actually were able to drop all of the cruft and extra code that was uh, there to try and support Python uh, 2 still and make it so that the code just works for Python 3 with no kind of workarounds or anything to support both uh, languages. Um, and so the next thing I want to talk about is our PTG. So um, our, our PTGs are something that's kind of very popular inside of our community. It's where a lot of our community members look forward to seeing each other and talking with each other. Um, both to kind of hang out and catch up as we work together uh, a lot, and also just to be able to drive more in-person discussion, um, share some of the use cases, <clears throat> discuss some of the specs that are proposed, um, and really drive a lot of discussion moving for, moving quicker in person um, that, you know, is a lot easier to, to hash out. And, you know, historically, we've always had this event, you know, with every release uh, in person. Um, unfortunately, given the current circumstances, the foundation has decided it's for the safety of everybody for us to, to do this um, remotely. So the, the, the schedule is up for the project team gathering that's going to come up, which is going to happen from June 1st to June 5th. Um, and uh, there's a, the, you have the ability to go and register there online. If, if your team hasn't signed up for it, please make sure to contact uh, ptg at openstack.org uh, just to make sure that you have all the uh, that you, you have a schedule and, and that you have a time slotted for you. Um, and I'd like to also express, you know, our thanks to the foundation's platinum and gold sponsors because um, they're really helping drive the uh, PTG happen, especially with how it's uh, changed into a, a remote online only model. Um, the next thing I want to also talk about uh, is the open dev event. So it's a virtual event series that uh, is kind of happening. Um, the idea is it's it's really uh, just focused around um, discussion and working together. Um, it, it's not necessarily something where you kind of just come on and and just simply you know sit and, and hear somebody talk about something. The idea is that everyone can come in and share their share whatever they need to talk to 
um, and discuss with our other operators or other people that are involved in the same subject to share what some of their challenges that they deal with and also some of the challenges um, that others deal with and hopefully come up with something that, that is useful um, in sharing that information. So that's a three-part event um, across different dates with uh, the three different themes. Uh, we have large-scale operations, hardware automation, and containers in production. So the registration is open currently for the large-scale operations event. Um, the other two should be opening sometime uh, this week, uh, from what I understand. So I'll look out for, for that. And, uh, and yeah, so that's it about the Open Dev event. So what we're going to get into now is the project highlights. So we have uh, several community members uh, from their uh, projects to kind of talk a little bit about what uh, they've accomplished in the past uh, cycle. Um, and just a small housekeeping note, um, I want to, uh, I know they're going to have very detailed information um, and they're going to share some interesting information with us. But if, if anyone has any questions, uh, feel free to drop them in the chat at any given moment. And what I'm going to do is that at the end of all the uh, community member presentations, I'll go over the, the chat and I'll kind of just moderate all the questions and, and get our uh, community members to answer them. Um, so to start off, uh, we're going to talk about Cinder, uh, our block storage, uh, block storage project, and uh, I'll give it up uh, for Brian uh, to present uh, the upcoming features of this cycle. Hi, um, I hope you can hear me. I'm Brian Rosmeda. I'm a senior software developer at uh, Red Hat, and I'm the Cinder PTL for the storage cycle that just ended and for the next one coming up. Um, so yeah, the um, there's some basic stuff about Cinder. Uh, we provide the block storage service that you use, so it's a REST API, and then some other functionality that, that goes along with that, the scheduler and the volume service, and a whole lot of drivers for various vendor backends. We also have client libraries, so OS Brick that's used for uh, making connections, and Cinderlib, which is a um, Cinderlib is an interesting project that's being used by Ember CSI. So it's part of the container storage interface. Um, and what it does is it allows the drivers that we have for Cinder to be reused in a uh, container context. Uh, so the advantage to operators is, is that you get drivers for backends that have been tested uh, with Cinder, but they can also be used in a different context. So that kind of keeps us relevant in these container oriented times. Um, just some things about the project health. I just looked at commits. Um, so if you go on Stackalytics, you can also look for reviews and other things, but this is just the number of commits. Um, so we're seeing a trend that's a, a little distress, well, very distressing, um, right? So in Stein and Train had roughly 150 contributors from around 40 to 50 companies. And in Usuri, we've had 30 contributors from 13 companies. Um, so this data is from this latest on Stackalytics was from April 22nd. I don't imagine a lot of stuff has changed. And then the percentage you see on the right is the percentage from uh, my company, Red Hat. Um, so in Usuri, we did 66%. Um, so that's good and bad. I mean, the good is that we're competent people and we're very interested in keeping OpenStack running. Uh, but the downside is it would be nicer to have more diversity of opinion and interest in uh, our project. So I just want to bring that to your attention in case uh, you have developers you can influence who might be interested in working on Cinder or the block storage service. Okay, so as far as content in this release, basically a um, very important part of Cinder is the backend drivers uh, for various backends. Um, so we've got 68 right now, and there's seven more that are in unsupported status. Um, what that means is that in order for a driver to be considered supported, it's got to have a running third party uh, continuous integration system because that's the only way we can test with all the different backends that are available. Um, and so, those, depending on vendor interest and various things, those go in and out. Uh, so, to compare, it's roughly the same number of drivers that we had in um, the previous release. Um, the difference is that the number of unsupported drivers has gone down. So that's good. It shows some uh, vendor interest in keeping the CI going and keeping these running. I want to mention we have one security note associated with uh, Cinder. And you can go look that up on the uh, 
the OpenStack Wiki. Um, I announced it on the mailing list, but back in uh, early December. So just in case you missed it, it only happens under various, not various, very constrained circumstances. You have to be using Ceph and you have to be using a non-standard configuration option. The reason I want to mention it here is that um, the way we're going to fix this is just remove that configuration option because it does not seem to be something that's needed. Um, so if you're using Ceph and you're using that option and you absolutely need it, you should get in touch with us as soon as possible uh, so that we know that. Um, but like I said, I put an announcement out in the mailing list back in December and never heard anything. So I'm assuming our plan to just remove it is fine. Um, as far as new features, nothing really major. Um, a lot of drivers added capabilities so that they can do, we have a, a set of required operations that all drivers must support. And then it's up to the drivers whether to support the other ones. So a lot of uh, drivers added more capabilities, which is always nice. Um, I guess I should mention as part of the nothing major, we did add support for um, Glance multi backends and for Glance um, image co-location, which is important in the um, edge kind of scenario. So that's something to notice. But I do want to point you to the Cinder release notes. We do publish very detailed release notes. So a lot of stuff is documented in there. So please take a look. And then as far as stability went, we added more voting gate jobs and more testing. And we plan to continue to do that to uh, keep the software stable and to find bugs early. OK, so what's going on in the future? Um, we're already underway for Victoria Milestone 1, which happened like two weeks, I think, after the uh, PTG. Anyway, we're working on, we've got volume local cache. Um, work started in New Surrey, um, and it's going to continue into Victoria. That affects OS Brick, Cinder, and Nova. Um, so you can look at the spec online if you're interested in that. Um, working on encrypted volumes for NFS. There's a patch up for that already. Um, Hitachi is adding a new driver, so their CI is running um, and the driver's being reviewed. And then some existing drivers have already posted patches to add some new capabilities, which is nice. And then there's that, um, there's an encryption effort to do in-flight encryption um, and Brick is going to get GPG encryption support as part of that. Um, so that's something people are working on also. And then the virtual PTG is coming up um, June 1st to 5th. It's not too late to participate in the discussion. So if you have particular things you would like us to be aware of or address, um, please feel free to go to that etherpad and uh, add something there. Um, some things we're definitely going to be discussing is the uh, an iSCSI driver for Ceph. Um, there's a British company, I believe, that's interested in that. I mean, I think a lot of people are interested in it, but they're interested in it to the point where their HPC group um, has said that they could provide some development help on that. Um, we're also going to discuss keeping unsupported drivers in tree. Um, we've had a strict policy in the past that as soon as a driver, um, basically as soon as their CI starts failing and hasn't been reporting or isn't fixed that we remove the driver in the next cycle. Um, we decided in this cycle to maybe leave the drivers in a little bit longer as long as they're not breaking any of the cinder gates, um, mainly to give vendors a little more time to address the problems and so that there's not so much churn in the code with drivers being in tree and then disappearing and then coming back in tree when they get reinstated. Um, so if you've got, I mean, hopefully that's useful for operators. Um, if you have an opinion on that, I'd be interested um, in hearing because it is kind of a pain to, because we have to maintain these if they're, the vendors aren't actually doing it. And then there's a continued emphasis on stability and improved automated testing. Um, so we're planning to add a bunch of uh, Tempest scenario tests to the Cinder Tempest plugin, which is run by the third party CIs. And that way we can catch bugs before they happen, hopefully. And uh, that's basically it. So thanks for listening and I'd be happy to answer questions later. Should probably hit the unmute button before talking, but thank you, Brian, for uh, uh, discussing all of that and sharing all the progress of the Cinder team. Um, next up is Neutron, our OpenStack uh, networking project. So, um, you know, feel free to go at it.
Hello, th thanks for that. Uh, so I'm Slavik Poplonski. I, I work for Red Hat and I'm PTL of Neutron. Uh, I was PTL of Neutron during the Uzuri uh, cycle. So uh, first of all, maybe a bit of uh, stats from Stackalytics. Uh, we completed four, four blueprints in Uzuri. Uh, we fixed more than 240 bugs. And that was done basically by around 58 uh, individual contributors uh, who, who sent five, more than 500 patches to, to all Neutron and Neutron Stadium projects. Uh, but most of them uh, was to, to Neutron uh, itself. So uh, that's a, a bit of statistics. Now maybe we can talk about I, uh, we can talk about those uh, new features which we implemented in in Uzuri. First of all, uh, it was discussed uh, during the PTG in the Shanghai and before also, we uh, merged networking of VM driver into the Neutron. Now it's one of the entry drivers, uh, the same like OVS or Linux Bridge or SYOV. Mm. We will just we will maintain one more driver as an entry driver. The reasons why we did that is basically that we, we believe that it will uh, first uh, help to uh, to bring more people to uh, and more people to to OVN driver uh, as uh, it will be in Neutron Tree, not a separate stadium project. So people Neutron cores will uh, basically uh, take a look more often on this driver and. Uh, and we hope that uh, it will help us also to to uh, to close some um, future parity gaps between ML2 OVS, especially and uh, ML2 OVN drivers. Uh, in the next cycles, we will probably also think about uh, switching, for example, in the dev stack, uh, switching uh, the default uh, kind of default uh, driver to be OVN as. Uh, as we believe it scales better and it works better than ML2 OVS. But that's something what we will still have to uh, discuss and uh, it's not decided yet. Uh, from next ne next uh, feature which we completed in Missouri is support for stateless security groups. Uh, so now you can create security group and mark it as stateless. So all security, all rules in this group will be uh, stateless and will not use contract, which may be very helpful for um, some use cases where uh, offloading of, of the uh, firewall rules are, are needed. And with, uh, without contract, it's much easier to do. Uh, currently, it's supported for IP tables based drivers. So IP tables and IP tables hybrid in case of uh, OVS uh, agent. There is no way to, no possibility to, to mix and to use stateless and stateful groups. So uh, uh, rules also uh, for one port. So if you will attach secu stateless security group to, to the port, you can attach a stateful security group also. So only one kind of, of groups can be attached to one port at the same time. Uh, next, yes, uh, so uh, next uh, feature which we did uh, is uh, added support for role-based access control for address scopes and subnet pools. Before uh, before Uzuri, we had a possibility to share uh, networks and QoS policies, for example. Uh, with different tenants uh, using role-based access control. Now it's also possible to, to do the same with address scopes and subnet pools. So operator can, for example, create subnet pool and uh, share the subnet pool uh, with some, um, some specific tenants which uh, he want to. Uh, the, the last, uh, I think the last uh, thing which I wanted to mention uh, about uh, new features is a possibility to tag resources during the post uh, request, so during the creation. Um, basically, this request came to us from Courier team. In Courier, they, uh, they are creating a lot of ports 
mostly ports, but a lot of resources uh, in Neutron, calling Neutron API. And before Uzuri, they were creating ports, um, even if they will, uh, they was creating ports in, in, in bulk, so many ports in one call. After that, they, they had to uh, iterate over the, all those ports and uh, send a single uh, request to create tags uh, for each of the ports individually. Now uh, it's possible to set those tags uh, during the post uh, call directly, also uh, when creating in bulk resources. So it may uh, reduce, uh, reduce uh, it may improve uh, performance of Courier, for example, or other apps uh, greatly. And that's also done in, in this cycle. Next slide, please. Oh yeah, uh, we have also two more things which I wanted to mention. It's uh, support for IGMP snooping. To, so now operator can, enable IGMP snooping in for uh, in OVS or OVN, uh, depending of, uh, of the driver, uh, backend driver, which is used. Uh, that, uh, that enabled IGMP snooping allows, uh, allows later to, it's useful for multicast traffic because it uh, will send, OVS will, uh, will only send, send multicast traffic to, to, to host to ports which are subscribed to, to specific multicast group, not to broadcast, kind of broadcast is to, to all uh, ports. So it may reduce uh, uh, this multicast traffic on, on the bridge. And the last thing is uh, possibility to, to create list of IP addresses in uh, IPv6 addresses in DNS mask. This came, this request came from, from the ironic use case where they're uh, using um, the, may, they may use different IP addresses, IPv6 addresses during the boot phase because uh, during the various phases of the boot process, uh, host can send different uh, ID uh, combinations. And because of that, when DNS mask got only one IPv6 address uh, for specific uh, host, the second request basically ended up with uh, no address uh, available. Uh, so there were, there were problems in booting process of the uh, bare metal machines. Now uh, one port can have more than one IPv6 and it, all of them will be listed in DNS mask for this port and it may then uh, give for various uh, requests, for requests with various uh, ID combinations, uh, DNS mask will basically send uh, different uh, uh, IP, IP addresses, uh, so it will work uh, fine. That last feature requests at least DNS mask 2.81 because it uh, relies on, on changes in DNS mask uh, to allow such configuration. So uh, I know it's backported to some DN, uh, older DNS mask, mask versions in CentOS 8, for example, but uh, I don't know about other distributions. So uh, basically it, it requires some, also some change in con, uh, config option in Neutron to, to say Neutron that I have the DNS mask version which supports this and can be used. Uh, and that's, that's all about Neutron uh, and new features in Neutron. And of course, I, I didn't mention here, but of course we dropped support for Python 2 in Neutron and all stadium projects. And from one last thing about stadium projects, which I also didn't mention on slides, but uh, I want to, to say uh, a bit about it. Uh, during the PTG in Shanghai, we were discussing status of stadium projects. And uh, during the Uzuri cycle, we deprecated, kind of deprecated uh, Neutron Firewall as a service in, uh, as a stadium project. So because of lack of maintainers, uh, basically. So if we, in the Victoria cycle, we will probably start the start, uh, process of moving Neutron Firewall as a service to, uh, to the uh, unofficial, to, to be unofficial project. Uh, 
and also during the uh, virtual PTG in June, we, we plan to, to review the list of the other stadium projects and uh, check what else may be, which other uh, will maybe also have to be deprecated. So if you are interested in neutron fire as a service uh, or keeping it in stadium or any other uh, stadium projects, please feel free to, to contact with us uh, and say about that that you you want to to maintain a self project we'll be more than happy to uh to work with you about that and that's all for me thank you awesome thank you so much Slavik. uh that was a very great presentation and it's awesome to see so many things happening in neutron especially that uh working alongside other open stack projects like courier um next up uh nova uh so i i I wanted to also kind of give an extra thanks to Gibby who stepped up uh, since Eric Fried wasn't able to finish uh, his duties uh, as a PTL and also thank Eric for his uh, amazing work throughout the project. But, you know, Gibby, I'll let you uh, take it over from here. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, so I'm Balaj Gibizer, known as Gibby. Uh, I will talk about what we did in Enola in the last uh, six months. Uh, small thoughts. We had uh, 86 individual contributor, contributors for the OSU release, and with them we merged around uh, 900 commits, uh, and with that implemented 19 blueprints. Um, that's, I think, uh, average average performance from from Nova team. And I will talk about some of the features. Uh, you will, I, I suggest you to read the, the Nova release notes <clears throat> that contains. Uh, a uh, lot more detail and and a longer list of of features we we implement, but these are the most important ones. So first, uh, we merged uh, cross cell migration and resize support uh, in Nova in Usuri. Uh, Nova allows to uh, separate your compute hosts into cells for security and scalability reasons, uh, but so far we hadn't supported moving uh, Nova servers between uh, cells. Uh, with Usuri, we support uh, code migration and resize to, to move them. Right now, we don't have the uh, manpower to develop this further, so extra server operations like live migration and, and evocation is not planned to, to be supported for, uh, through cross cells. Uh, but if you are interested in those features, then please contact us and, and, uh, and we'll get you up to speed how to, how to contribute those. The next one is uh, a long-standing request uh, to, to support pre-caching glance images on compute hosts. Nova always does uh, on-demand caching of the glance images. So when you create a server uh, from a, a glance image that wasn't uh, before used in a compute host, then Nova will download that uh, glance image and, and store it in a cache on the compute. But uh, when, when your user uploads a new glance image into OpenStack, uh, then the first boot from that uh, glance image on each compute will be slower because of this image download time. So it's a, a logical request to, to have a way for uh, deployers or administrators to pre-cache uh, images on certain computes. We added support for that in the, in the aggregate API. So you can, you, can select, you can say that which glance image should be downloaded uh, to which uh, uh, computes in a given um, host aggregate. Okay, uh, the next one is a cooperation with the Cyborg project in OpenStack. Cyborg gives support for accelerators, mainly G uh, v uh, FPGAs and uh, physical GPUs. And in the USRI cycle, we implemented the first step uh, in Nova to integrate with Cyborg. So basically now you can create Nova server uh, with uh, a cyborg device profile in the flavor extra spec. And by that, Nova will contact cyborg during the server creation <coughs> process and, and, uh, and ask cyborg to prepare the requested uh, uh, devices in the device profile. By that, cyborg will, will uh, find devices and, and load software on the FPGAs, for example. And then uh, it will let Nova know that when the, the device is ready and Nova will when, when Nova creates the VM in the hypervisor, it will attach uh, the, the, the cyborg devices to that, to that VM. So by that, uh, you can create servers with, with uh, FPGAs and physical GPUs, accelerating your, your uh, um, processing in, in that VM. This is the first step of the integration. 
Uh, we support now creating and deleting servers with uh, cyborg devices uh, and also some, some uh, uh, basic operation like stop, uh, stopping and starting and restarting those VMs. But advanced operations like resize, uh, cold migration, live migration, evacuate is still uh, not supported and don't we reject those if your VM has cyborg devices. But we have plans in the next cycle to extend this together with the cyborg team. Uh, we are still discussing which, uh, uh, which operations will be, will be done first uh, in, in the Victoria cycle. The next one is a similar uh, story. A uh, couple of cycles ago, we added support for uh, uh, VMs with minimum bandwidth guarantees. Uh, but at the time, we didn't support all the server operations. And basically, in Ussuri, we, we finished up uh, the remaining uh, uh, server move operations to support the minimum bandwidth guarantees. So now we support live migration evocation on shelf in Ussuri. Uh, and this completes the picture of all the, the server move operations. Okay, the next one is, uh, is for uh, administrators and deployers. There are certain cases when, when the NOVA and placement uh, uh, resource, uh, uh, resource uh, handling mechanisms are, are faulty. Uh, and that can uh, lead to orphaned resource allocations, which could lead underutilization of your resources in your computes. We added a new uh, CLI uh, tool in the Nova Manage CLI called Nova Manage uh, Placement uh, Audit. This uh, CLI command can detect uh, the, these orphaned allocations in the, in the placement service and also give a way to, to clean that up. Okay, the next one is, uh, is also a big uh, uh, step forward. Uh, we added new API uh, policy roles in Nova that now uh, supports the Keystone scope type capabilities. We added those uh, in a way that the old uh, policy defaults are still in place and the new a scope policy uh, uh, rules are just uh, 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 added with, a, with an OR connection. So you can still use your own, your old policies, but in the future, uh, in the coming one or two cycles, we are planning to deprecate the old uh, policy roles and, and uh, that way you, we will a bit force you to, to move forward with the, with the scope, uh, scope policies. Last but not least, uh, we added support for rescuing servers that was booted from volumes. Uh, rescue is, is a way to fix your root file system of the VM if you get uh, this corruption or, or, or a file system corruption. But so far we didn't support it, uh, this rescue operation if you, if you booted your VM from, from volumes. Now we added that and along the way, uh, we also enhanced how the, res how the rescue attaching uh, the rescue image into the, into the server. Uh, uh, before Usuri, uh, Nova re or, uh, reordered the, the images and uh, reordered the block devices of your, of your server and the rescue image became the first block device. Uh, but now we, we support, uh, uh, with the Libya driver, we support uh, stable order. So when you rescue your server, the, the rescue image will be added at the end of the end of the block device list, keeping all the uh, device names uh, intact. Uh, that was all I wanted to highlight, but I am happy to answer questions. Thank you. Awesome, thank you so much. Uh, that was great, and I think it's awesome that the Nova project is still uh, making so much progress uh, over uh, you know the, these past few cycles. Um, so next up, uh, we have Cola. So Cola is, uh, it's a combination of container images, uh, deployment tooling using Ansible and a few other things. So um, I'll uh, lead, uh, let Mark, uh, the PTL of the project, uh, come in and, and discuss uh, what's updated in the past few weeks inside Cola. Great, thanks, uh, thanks Mohamed. So, I won't dwell on these for too long, but just to show that the project is in a, a pretty healthy state at the moment, um, relatively. Uh, we, that said, would always uh, appreciate more contributors, um, particularly um, 
uh, potential core contributors uh, lining up to um, mm -hmm. fill in the gaps where people <clears throat> where people move on. So we um, we've got uh, implemented quite a few features in the Yasuru cycle. Um, the main one um, was switching everything to uh, to Python three um, and dropping support for Python two, um, which as Mohammed said earlier, is something that every project has done. Um, but for us, there were quite a few different places where we were using Python in different ways. Um, and of course, we were deploying all of the other services which also needed to switch. So uh, it was quite a, a um, complicated manoeuvre. Um, and, and also uh, tightly coupled to that is the addition of support for CentOS 8, um, which um, has really only support for Python 3 and CentOS 7 only has real support for Python 2. So there wasn't a very um, uh, friendly migration path between those two. Uh, there was quite a lot of work went into uh, the, the CentOS 8 migration and um, much of it has been backported to the train branch as well, which means that you can um, deploy train on CentOS 7, migrate to CentOS 8, and then upgrade to Yasuri on CentOS 8. Um, a nice uh, security feature we've added is um, TLS encryption of the backend API services. So we already had um, TLS encryption, both of the, the public and recently added the, uh, the internal API. Um, but this adds the leg of the uh, communication from HA proxy through to the backend services and uh, encrypts that as well. Um, so we started with Keystone, but have now added quite a few different services, uh, Cinder, Glance, Heat, Horizon, Keystone and Placement. And I think we'll also have Nova and Barbican by the time we release. We added support for OVM, um, as mentioned by Slavek earlier, and the integration of that service with Neutron. So um, that will be quite a nice option for uh, environments that are looking to, uh, to scale their network that bit further. Um, we dropped support for our um, homegrown Ceph deployment, um, instead preferring to rely on um, another to other tools such as Ceph Ansible or Ceph Deploy, and in the process improved our integration uh, with Ceph, making it, it easier to, uh, to integrate with the Ceph Ansible Deploy cluster. We added support for uh, deployment of the Zoom container networking interface. Mm -hmm. So this allows uh, you to use um, Docker along with uh, ContainerD to support Zoom capsules, which are similar to Kubernetes pods using the, um, the C container networking interface uh, developed as part of Kubernetes project. We added a, an Elasticsearch Curator image and uh, support for deploying it so that you can manage Elasticsearch data and do things like um, uh, pruning, um, uh, retention policies and that kind of thing. And finally, um, Menelox networking uh, now has improved support in our containers. Uh, I just wanted to mention about a project that not everyone might be aware of, uh, called Kaobi. Um, it, uh, it started as a, an unofficial project, um, but during the train cycle, we added it as a deliverable of the Collar project. And it's, um, it, it's really complementary to, uh, to Collar and Collar Ansible in the way that it works. So Collar Ansible focuses on um, uh, deploying uh, the collar containers to a um, to a set of hosts, and what KB adds to this is the uh, the kind of the um, from zero provisioning um, of the cloud, and it uses Bifrost and Ironic to do that. So we get all of the nice features of Ironic um, in a fairly minimal uh, provisioning environment under Bifrost. Uh, we can do automatic discovery, um, hardware provisioning of those servers, and then loop in Collar Ansible to deploy containers to them. And you can try that project out um, 
at this uh, Universe from Nothing project here. Uh, hopefully the slides will be made available so you can uh, grab the link. But... And finally, um, just wanted to mention that we started uh, something called the Collar Club. So um, we took a little while to uh, decide on the name um, and if you can see at the bottom that we uh, originally proposed it as a SIG. So the etherpad is uh, actually Collar SIG. Um, but it's it's actually just uh, just fine without being a SIG. Um, and really what we're doing is trying to bridge the gap between operators and upstream contributors and, and everyone in, on that spectrum. Um, people who just consume the project without contributing at all, all the way through to people who uh, contribute every now and again, um, maybe raise the occasional bug and then call core reviewers and, and the PTL. Trying to get all those people to um, to communicate better, um, to grow a um, and improve the uh, the collar community, um, and also use it as a way of um, reducing barriers to upstream contribution for operators, because it isn't particularly easy to uh, to to make that uh, leap into contribution, um, but. If you just if you have an hour with someone who knows how to do it, going through um, the steps that are required, it's not actually rocket science. Um, it just uh, just takes a bit of time. Um, and we also want to uh, to increase the uh, the knowledge in the community. You know, there's a lot of um, specialist knowledge that people have built up over time. If they if they're using particular combinations of services configured in a particular way, and we get requests often in IRC saying, oh, I'd like to use service X in a particular way. How do I do it? And it would be nice to be able to say, well, actually this person knows how to do that and point them in the right direction. Uh, so this, at the moment, we're, this takes the form of a, uh, a video call that we have every two weeks, uh, just for an hour. Um, we're still, it's still very experimental, really. Um, we're, We'll, uh, we'll keep changing the format uh, until we get it right. But um, so far, it's been pretty, um, a pretty nice, uh, nice way to to meet people and to uh, uh, share some ideas. That's all for me. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you uh, very much uh, for that. Um, so next up, we have Octavia, the load balancer. Uh, load balancing project of OpenStack, and uh, Michael is here to talk a little bit about what uh, they've accomplished in the use server release. Thank you, Mohammed. I'm Michael Johnson. I'm a principal uh, software engineer with Red Hat, and I will be the PTL for the Victoria series. Uh, but I'd like to thank the Octavia team and Adam Harwell, the current PTL, for um, all their work in the use series release. There we go. <laughs> um, so uh, this is another release where a small team uh, did accomplish quite a bit. And so I do want to uh, give my appreciation to the team for all their contributions and work. Uh, one thing that was unique this uh, release for us is we mentored some college students. Uh, again, I'd like to thank uh, Kendall Nelson for uh, helping facilitate that uh, with the foundation. Uh, it was an interesting experience. We had them for a semester and we had to ramp them up on DevStack and, and OpenStack and how that works and then get them into coding. Uh, and that was fairly successful. So let's jump into some of the highlights. Uh, one of the most anticipated features is load balancer availability zones. So this allows you to define uh, availability zones inside Octavia that then map to the other services and allow you to deploy load balancers uh, in different availability zones you may have defined in your overall OpenStack deployment. So for example, for the Amphora provider driver, uh, an availability zone is design, uh, defined as a compute availability zone, uh, the management network that will be used for that uh, AZ, and then any valid VIP networks uh, that users can use when deploying load balancers to that uh, AZ. And so then uh, once that AZ is defined by the operator, end users can uh, specify that at load balancer creation time 
and uh, Octavia takes it from there and, and deploys the, the load balancer in that area. Really handy for things like uh, cellular site deployments, uh, retail locations was one of the use cases uh, we, we've heard in the past. Uh, so fairly exciting feature. Uh, enhancements to the client, we've added a uh, wait command. So uh, the Octavia uh, API is an asynchronous service, similar to, to Neutron. Uh, so we have some processes that will uh, change the state of an object into an immutable status. Uh, so pending create, pending update, et cetera. Now you have a command line option that allows you to say, let's wait to complete the command until that status has gone back into active or a, a, a mutable status. This is great for uh, automation scripting. You no longer have to pull the status yourself. The client could do that for you. Moving on. Um, so speaking of those students, uh, this was a partnership with North Dakota State University. We had four students uh, for the semester and they worked on adding uh, some enhancements for TLS in Octavia. So uh, now uh, in the USURI release, you can specify the allowable cipher list uh, for your listeners and for your backend pool connections to your backend members. So this allows you to tighten that security, say only certain uh, TLS ciphers are uh, valid for that connection. And if somebody attempts to use a, you know, maybe lower security cipher, um, that request will be denied. Uh, so this again is, is good for security compliance, um, any of those requirements you may have, uh, and, and being able to enforce that at the load balancer level. Uh, the students also worked on uh, uh, restricting the TLS protocol lists. That is uh, mostly complete and will be an early uh, merge for Victoria. So great work from those students. Uh, very impressive to see them come up to speed on OpenStack and uh, be able to contribute a feature uh, inside their semester. And then finally, one of the big work items for the team uh, is uh, pulling in uh, a feature of uh, Oslo Task Flow. So this is a, another OpenStack uh, project called Job Board. And so, as I mentioned earlier, uh, the Octavia API is an asynchronous API, and we go off and do many tasks to provision uh, a load balancer on behalf of the user. Some of these can be 50 to 100 steps uh, that we go through to uh, complete that provisioning operation. And so in that flow, um, as we walk through those individual tasks with this new uh, technology preview, we're checkpointing at each uh, task transition and saving the state. So if that controller that is actively working on that provisioning for some reason goes down, it loses power, et cetera, um, we can redeploy that in-progress provisioning to an alternate controller and pick up right where it left off. Uh, so this is kind of a sub-provisioning uh, controller resiliency. Uh, it goes a step beyond just having uh, uh, the HA controller environment that we've had for a few releases now. Uh, where you can, of course, deploy multiple controllers. This is going down to the individual provisioning layer. Uh, so that's a technology preview for USURI. Uh, you can enable it through config settings, but we're looking to make this the uh, default driver uh, for the Infora provider in Victoria. So I think that uh, pretty much covers it all. Thank you so much, Michael. Uh, I appreciate it. And, and that's an awesome uh, work to kind of work with all those students and uh, have something uh, material after it all. Um, so the last project to present for today is Manila. Uh, so I'd like to invite them to come up and, and talk a bit about uh, what's been accomplished in the, in the past cycle. Thanks, Mohammed. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Gautam Pacharabi, and uh, I had the privilege to serve as the uh, project team lead for uh, the Manila community in the last cycle. So uh, Manila is the shared file system service for OpenStack. It, uh, it's a service that you can go ask for NAS shares and uh, perform a bunch of operations, uh, much like the block storage or the object storage service from OpenStack, right? 
And so the Usuri cycle was the 10th official release for Manullah. And uh, it was a fairly busy cycle and a productive one. Uh, we're uh, also especially proud of um, uh, the work we did with uh, some of our interns. And um, th uh, this cycle saw contributions from two outreach interns, um, uh, Solidat uh, Koksala and Maury Tam, both of whom contributed um, significant changes uh, to supporting the OpenStack client interface with Manala. And they also contributed uh, to Manala UI and documentation through their time with us. Uh, we also continue to work this cycle with Robert Washek, a uh, Google Summer of Co Code intern uh, who began who began the uh, Manala container storage uh, interface driver uh, effort and uh, is uh, the lead contributor and the maintainer uh, for that project in the cloud provider OpenStack uh, repository. And um, besides, uh, I mean, there, there's a bunch of stuff that we committed to, uh, uh, committed in this cycle that you will find in our release notes, but I wanted to call out some of our highlights. Um, the uh, API versions uh, have increased, and this is, um, I mean, with Usuri, you get the 2.55 as the latest API version. And what that brings in is um, uh, at 2.53, we introduced uh, Coda controls for uh, share, rep share replicas. So share replication is, uh, still remains to be a experimental feature through this uh, re release. Uh, we've been working on this for a few cycles now. Um, the last cycle the tra uh, during train, we added support for um, uh, uh, share drivers that could handle share servers. Uh, and uh, they can now do share replication as well. Uh, and this cycle, uh, we, we rounded that up with, um, with providing Coda controls for the number of share replicas or the capacity of share replicas that you have uh, uh, across your backends and such. Um, we also have um, CRUD APIs uh, for, uh, uh, for groups, uh, share group types. Uh, share group specifications and share group snapshots, all of them graduating from their experimental status. Uh, so this was uh, yet another experimental feature that we introduced a few cycles ago, but we've polished it, polished it up with quite a, quite a few uh, uh, improvements and uh, they've graduated uh, as of the last API version that we shipped with this release. And uh, we made some improvements to the uh, scheduler. Um, I mean, uh, an important one of which, uh, and, uh, uh, although minor, but uh, trips up some things will be uh, that the capability filter, uh, capabilities filter uh, will now perform case insensitive comparisons. Um, and this um, uh, can actually af affect your cloud. Uh, we, we did craft a release note and we've added some documentation to that effect, uh, but we thought this was the best way forward based off of a couple of uh, bug reports and some uh, user feedback. And um, the, the provision capacity um, uh, estimations are smarter in the, in the scheduler, they're uh, faster and they're not being done for all of the backends as they were uh, in the previous cycles. Um, and we now have the ability to clone snapshots across uh, storage pools and uh, availability zones. This was a, um, I mean, this is a brand new feature uh, for uh, at least a couple of backends that we have. Um, but then, uh, I mean, you could be turning this uh, option on in your clouds if you if you use these backends. But then, uh, if in case you don't uh, have support for this, we have a way to gracefully uh, fa fail back to the previous behavior. But the, uh, what, what, one other thing this brings to us uh, is asynchronous creation of um, um, uh, snapshot clones, and uh, that that workflow has been enhanced. And uh, this paves the way for a few more backends that were actually not implementing uh, the uh, cloning from snapshots because Manala expected that um, the, uh, to support only instantaneous clones. Uh, we no longer have that expectation uh, because we added a few processes to, ta to track snapshot creation that could take uh, some time. 
and um, we also enhanced the share and extend APIs. Uh, these were silently failing sometimes, and uh, and sometimes they would hard fail with, with a status uh, set on them, even when uh, the backend uh, shared file system was absolutely fine. And so we added some um, some some more intelligence in the in in the uh, share backend interaction, uh, which would allow these shares to go back to being available for any more management path app operations, uh, while also uh, utilizing the asynchronous uh, user messages feature uh, to let the user know what what really happened. Uh, so, for instance, if somebody was just trying to get, uh, shrink their shared file system uh, to some, uh, I mean, that and this shrink operation could potentially cause a data loss, we'd let them know via user message rather than hard failing and setting the status and uh, disallowing uh, them from performing anything else on that share. And um, the, 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 likewise, we also improve, improved the uh, user messages API to now allow uh, filtering based on time intervals and such. Um, we had a number of driver in, imp improvements. Um, I mean, a couple of drivers added support for uh, snapshot clones across storage pools. This included uh, NetApp and CFS on Linux. Um, the Dell EMC uh, Unity driver now supports managing and unmanaging shares, share servers, and snapshots. Um, and we uh, have preliminary support for OSC uh, thanks to uh, the efforts of uh, our interns and uh, their mentor. Um, they, you can now update, create, uh, delete shares uh, and access rules and share types. Um, more uh, functionality is planned uh, through the next cycle. And the Manila UI um, is playing catch-up game uh, at this point. Uh, we uh, are, I mean, it now supports adding IPv6 access control uh, rule lists uh, to shares and also supports uh, share group capabilities. Now this, um, I mean, we, we understand is still far, far behind uh, the Manila API and there's much work to be done. Um, and we, we 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 do have some help uh, in the in the last cycle, um, including uh, making things easier for uh, for some of these Manila UI contributors to come in from other communities as well. Um, so that's pretty much uh, it as far as highlights are got, uh, for this cycle. There are a lot of things planned for the Victoria cycle, and we're getting a head start on the community goals. So please uh, join us at the. PTG to learn more or to influence our direction. Thank you. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for that. Uh, so with, with that, we have a, uh, we have a bunch of teams that presented uh, the work they did. And um, I think something that's really cool is over you know the past hour that we've been going over this, the release team was hard at work at finalizing everything. Um, and so the OpenStack Assert release is officially out. Um, so if you navigate to openstack.org slash um, you'll be able to uh, see all the information about the new release. Um, I just posted that in chat. So, um, you know, OpenStack Assert is officially out. I'm really excited about it. Um, I'm hoping that, you know, people go and, um, and check it out and, and, you know, thank all of uh, the huge contributor list that we have on every release page, which I still always think is, is uh, so cool and exciting. Um, also, on that note as well, um, Kendall Nelson from the Upstack Foundation uh, took it uh, upon themselves to say, hey, you know, usually we have some sort of celebration together to celebrate the new release. Um, unfortunately, uh, usually that happens at the PTG and, you know, we're not going to be at a PTG. Um, so they've set up an event uh, where we can all kind of get together online and and celebrate the, the new Usuri release. So I just posted a link uh, for the mailing list post for that. Um, and we'll probably attach that in the email with the recording um, and the slides. Um, and so that's happening on Friday, on this Friday um, at, uh, at 20 UTC. So um, I think, you know, if you want to come in and, you know, chat with all of our other contributors and, and you know, see what everyone has been up to and, and talk about the past cycle or just, you know, catch up about anything, um, I think it'll be uh, really fun for everybody. Um, I think I, I don't really see any questions that were posted throughout throughout this. Um, it seems like the only question had to do with the um, security uh, issue that uh, Cinder talked about. But what's amazing is the discussion has already started, and it looks like 
um, some progress has already been made on uh, that security question. So that's just amazing. Um, other than that, I think that's all. Uh, thank you so much, everyone. Thanks for all the community, for all the hard work that they do, um, regardless if you're contributing code or uh, whether you know you're you're a TC member or a UC member or a board member or if you're you know triaging bugs. Any part of what our community does is, is super helpful. Um, and also a huge shout out to the uh, hardworking folks at the foundation. Um, it's not easy these days, especially with all these event changes, and they're working their hardest to you know enable all of us to be able to to still continue to 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 collaborate and and build the software that we all uh, like to build. So. Thanks everybody, uh, congratulations, and uh, enjoy the rest of your day or your evening or, or, or night. Thank you.